Welcome back to Income Trading 101. Today is Thursday, March the 4th, 2021. And, you know, with all the news about interest rates and treasury yield uh, that's been in the press lately, especially today, after uh, some, of the, some of the comments that were made, I wanted to take a look at TLT, uh, which is the ETF on the 20-year the treasury bond. Uh, this has been a, a, this is one of the ones, one of the ETFs that I've always enjoyed uh, putting option trades on. I uh, have uh, a lot of experience, I guess, uh, trading this over the years because a lot of times you can find uh, the types of trades that that I specifically am looking for. So um, you can see this thing does kick off a, a bit of a uh, dividend as well. Not a whole lot, but hey, some is better than a uh, sharp stick in the eye. <laughs> You'll also notice the lack of earnings, right? Because you don't really have earnings on the treasury yield. So we're just going to pull it back as far as uh, trading view will let me see the data. And you can see it's a bit of a choppy yet higher upward move. We've got a downward pullback here uh, where we currently are. So this is great. This is going to let us look at some trends. This is going to let us look at you know, uh, our MACD checkout momentum, and we're definitely going to be able to use some Fibonacci analysis on this one as well. So let's dive in. I'm going to get rid of this volume here, kick it all the way back out. Uh, let's see. I'm going to send it back. Uh, we'll just do it to, to uh, I want to get just beyond the downward effect of the of the uh, pandemic, the, the uh, what do you call it, COVID pandemic. So let's go ahead and throw in some moving averages and uh, get this thing going. So we will do the normal. Uh, we're going to turn this into a 10 day. This will be our short term uh, moving average, uh, more or less a buy signal. So I'm going to turn that one green. We'll do a uh, 20 day that's going to be our red I should say 20 period but because we start with the daily charts this is actually a 20 day and then we're going to look at a 60 uh, this is going to be more of our longer term uh, longer term uh, moving average so there we go all right so you see back in May uh, April and May you had uh, really uh, April, you had that upward trend that the entire market, it's like the whole world caught that trend, right? Uh, pulled back a bit, made another trend higher, pulled back. And for quite a while now, we've been angling lower or look how closely the 10 and the 20 day have traded. I much prefer scenarios like this where there's a little bit more of a divergence between them uh, so that we can uh, clearly say yes this is a downward a downward trend and as usual we're going to take a look at this in multiple time frames so let's go ahead and pull this lower to the one hour sometimes I do use the four hour you guys have seen me do that in other videos but every now and then I just like to jump to the one hour and see what's going on so certainly a downward trend with uh, you know uh, just uh, earlier this month or earlier last month, you had the 60 period higher than the 20 and higher than the green. So that's a clear trend down. You had this sort of pullback a little bit higher that created a little bit of uh, convergence, a little bit of um, uh, inconclusive uh, trend results there. And then starting back here with this crossover on February 12th, uh, we've had nice downward markets until we see price action pulling above, right? Price action pulling above uh, the 10 and the 20. So I always pay attention to that. And now we appear to be headed lower again. We've got a clear scenario where the 60 period is higher than the 20, which is higher than the 10, which is, you know, all three, all three moving averages are, are in line to, uh, to head lower. Let's take a look at the uh, 15 minute just to see how that's, how that's going. All right. In this one, uh, we still have uh, we still have a clear downward trend towards the end, but I am noticing how the slight pullback is pulling the ten period higher. 
I don't know that that is a good indication uh, that we should wait or not. Um, certainly at the 30 minute, I'm sorry, at the one hour level, uh, I felt like this was going lower. Um, I would be certainly, let's just pull this back to the, to the daily. Um, I would be very hesitant to buy when you've had such a consistent, oops, sorry about that, such a consistent downward move uh, in this ETF, right? I mean, we've gone from, let's see, this high back in the 172 area all the way down to 138. So $30, nothing to sneeze at. Um, it did sort of trickle down much lower or, or lower for a period. And now lately, the slope of this uh, downward trend has just uh, increased significantly. All right, let's go ahead. Instead of uh, looking at just the moving averages, let's take a look at the MACD. I always like the MACD because it tends to give me an idea of where momentum is headed. And I'll look at that across multiple time frames as well just to see what's going on. So no surprise there. We've seen how when you have a significant trend one way or the other, you don't get clear signals with the MACD. So that's to be expected at the daily level. Let's see if the one hour or the or the uh, the the shorter time frames gives us any other indication. So you've had you know a, a nice little buy signal uh, that happened last week. You get a little pop, and now we're heading lower again. Notice still how for uh, several days the MACD did not come above the zero line, meaning it remained in negative in negative territory, uh, territory where you really are looking to buy. And I'm not looking to buy uh, as a counter trend. I would rather support this downward trend than buy it, right? Let's take a look low, uh, one step lower, at least to the 15 minute, and see if that's uh, if that's going to give us anything else. I'm going to have to zoom in for the 15. Um, 15 minute is showing a crossover in the oversold area, which would mean that that's sort of a, a bias, uh, a, a bullish signal, um, but. Again, I'm not really looking to buy. Like here, you had a bullish signal that never really got above the zero line, only to see stock go lower, see the ETF go lower. So um, not looking to buy. <laughs> I don't know how many times I could repeat that. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm angling to sell this thing either. It just means that uh, I want to see a trend established and I want to... Uh, trade with that trend. I want to trade with strength in general. So now I'm going to pull this on back and we're going to analyze a bigger up move. So we're going to do a Fibonacci way back here from November of 18 to I'm going to ignore the, the tippy top that was back there uh, during the pandemic back in February, March time frame. And just use this double top. We had a nice little double top um, in April of 2020 and in August of 2020. So let's do this. Slide that over and take a look at where we are. All right. So, ooh, very interesting, right? When you look at the analysis of this uptrend, um, you see how this $135 level has really played support for quite some time and it almost played a little bit of resistance back in July of 2019 and we uh, appear to be heading right back to that level in fact with us being only three dollars away from it I think we're gonna hit that level um, if you were looking to buy this I would uh, I would wait I'd maybe throw in some uh, some buy signals down at the 135 or 135 half level, something like that. Maybe you sell some puts if you've got the uh, clearance in your account. You sell puts down there, which would allow you to get paid today and, and still be able to, um, you know, buy this stock uh, when, it, when it hits uh, lower, 135. Um, but yeah, to me, that's a strong level. I wouldn't be surprised if TLT drops back to that level and... You know, as well, this 50% level played as uh, you've got congestion around that level here uh, back in September of 19. You also saw it play as resistance in late October of 19. 
and at early December of 19, and it kind of played, let's see if we can pull this out, kind of played a little bit of support uh, back here in uh, February of 2020, before the, before the global pandemic. And isn't this interesting as well? Right now, TLT stock is sitting right near where it bottomed uh, during the global pandemic. That's, that's where we are. That's pretty crazy, I think. So we're definitely up against or hitting some really significant levels. Um, we're approaching that 61.8% retracement of the last move. Um, I think that's highly likely given that uh, there clearly have been some, uh, that level has, has uh, been significant in multiple different times. And uh, I also, if you told me buy or sell this thing, I would certainly be looking to sell it. But knowing that uh, we could get a rebound or a retracement off of one of these significant levels that are relative to the uh, relative to the previous um, the previous uh, support and resistance that we've seen um, previous trends. So that's it for this video. I could do. Uh, you guys know how much I love uh, downward trending uh, channels. Well, really, just trending channels. We'll we'll do one quick one. I can't I can't help myself. So here we go. It's going to draw that line there. I always love looking at these channels this way because it lets you see like, wow, okay, we actually were still, look at this, we were still connecting. Look at all those lows that were connected, right? With these imperial and sync really with these highs. And then we broke out of this channel uh, back in in uh, mid February, early to mid February, and where it looks like we were creating a new one because the slope of the downward trend is so is so much stronger now than it was before, right? So very interesting, something to look at. Again, this is technical analysis. I could go into more fundamental data, but I really uh, love just seeing what the charts are showing us and deciding if there's anything of value for us to look for. The other thing that, that this top, that this uh, ETF gave us was a beautiful, beautiful textbook. Uh, do that. Let's see. This is a textbook double top. So, double top and head it lower go figure and sometimes you know you can look for uh, the bottom of these to be to be your uh, another sort of support or resistance level so and this one definitely did not let us down so you have essentially the closing low from back in June of 2020 ended up being support uh, here in uh, in November, again, uh, support in early December until we gapped. Look at that. We gapped lower, gapped below this level. And then look at there. It actually became it actually became a resistance right there. And it's the stock has been or this ETF is just uh, just sped lower since. So very interesting uh, on this one. Uh, certainly. Uh, some probably some more money to be, be made on the short side uh, but because we are touching uh, the significant support areas uh, it might be uh, time to also be aware of what a retracement uh, what a pullback higher or a continuation of the longer term trend would mean for your position so um, that's it hope you guys are thank you for watching the video I hope you enjoyed it and uh, definitely subscribe to the uh, channel Share the videos with a friend. I'd love to have as many people as possible uh, watching these analyses and uh, learning how to use them for your own uh, trading at home. So <clears throat> leave a comment if you have any questions and uh, have a great rest of your week. Happy trading.